mentioned, when you hear the topic of networking, I know how you feel. And that's exactly how I feel too. Um, so we're not going to do just that. But I'm sure as you saw the title of today's webinar, Making Your Network Your Net Worth. The net worth is tricky because traditionally when you ask someone, what's your net worth? They think about uh, the assets minus liabilities, which is the dollar sign, right? So if you have more investments, more cash, more real estate, then you probably have a greater uh, net worth than, uh, than me. And there is a reason I chose HR as an occupation instead of accounting is because I'm not very good with numbers. So we're not going to talk about the traditional dollar sign or financial net worth. So what about my, uh, my professional net worth? You know, over the years, when I ponder about my own experience that I came to Canada as an international student, studied uh, at a university here uh, for my undergrad studies, and then I was a green worker bee starting working in HR, and over the years, gradually uh, move, moved my way up, grew my career, and then started my own uh, HR consulting practice just over five years ago. So when I thought about my own experience, I was pondering if the 21st century net worth always need to be measured by the traditional dollar figure, or can it be measured differently? So again, I'm going to look for your participation now and use the chat box function and tell me if you are going to write your professional net worth with the assets column, what would you put under your own professional assets columns? So what would you put in the asset column? And Karen, I'm having a little issue seeing the chat box function after I share the screen. If you wouldn't mind reading out some of the answers for me, that would be lovely. Sure, Ada. Um, so I see they're coming in very fast and furious. Um, degree, education, uh, contacts, there are some of those, um, people skills, training, memberships, and uh, the CPHR designation, um, relationship building, uh, lots of work experience, um, integrity, professionalism, community involvement, um, and accomplishments and other memberships. That's awesome. Thank yeah. you very much, Karen. So those are along the line of what I was thinking about. And here's my laundry list. Just again, Ada's two cents, personal opinions. Everyone's answer is going to be a little bit different and we don't want to have the exact same answers. Again, just sharing with you my personal uh, two cents. So in my assets column, th these are things that I would consider as important. So career growth, that would in include your career start, launching your career to all the experiences, qualifications, skill sets, knowledge that you have accumulated and eventually have a um, successful career run. Uh, skill sets, reputation, getting information, getting referrals, and then the education, the hardcore credentials and professional development, continuous development, the attitudes, the personality traits, and intellectual property that you build for yourself. The easiest way of interpreting the assets column for our professional net worth is to think about the knowledge that we possess, the things that we are able to do, and also the people we're connected with. Because as Karen has introduced in my, in my bio at the beginning of our session today, is that I think networking connections is very important to me. Whenever I need troubles or whenever I have questions, I turn to people I know who I trust for, for advice. And how is networking connected with assets here? Is because the items I listed under my assets column are, can all be contributed or can always uh, be enhanced through networking, through making those connections. And I'll tell you a bit more about why today. So what to expect today? I did promise you I'm, going, I'm not going to make it as boring as, uh, as you would expect. So I try to make it as live and fun as possible uh, using lots of the chat box function to get your interactions and, and uh, questions and etc. So today we're going to talk about four simple steps, just four steps, hopefully that'll help you remember where to get started for your networking. Four steps of building assets. 
what are the uh, what are the four ways of building strategic uh, interpersonal connections to help you either as you're a student looking for your first work, uh, or as to changing jobs or enhancing your uh, professional reputation, or if you're a business owner, entrepreneur, want to expand on your customer base. Along with the four steps of building assets, building those connections, I'm also going to share with you uh, four pitfalls uh, with my personal stories, of course, and then also have you do another four activities with me. So I do look for your participation. I really appreciate your participation and attention. So let me start it. Let's get started with the first step. In my opinion, um, it's very critical for us to realize the purpose, why we want to network. So really defining that why. Why do we care to spend our time, efforts, energy on meeting other people? And because, so last August, uh, when I presented first CPHR on networking, I talked about in-person online networking, what are the online presence, different tools. I talked about because more than 70% of jobs are actually not posted in the traditional sense. Either it's the job boards or the posters or a radio or TV stations where no you normally used to be able to find work. However, nowadays more than 70% of job opportunities are not officially posted. In order for you to find work, you need to talk to others to get these potential information. Or if you want to prepare for a hard to get, finally you got that interview opportunity, turn to your connections to ask for advice, practice your interviews, and maybe asking people, your friends who are working at those companies about company culture um, and uh, interview tips. So these are all the things that contribute to our career growth. So which is falling under that assets column. Where I saw people had a uh, connection liability was actually during the initial stage of the pandemic last year. So in the uh, mid-year of 2020, I have seen, uh, I've talked to people who were laid off. They were, they had been with their companies for years, for ages, and they never expected to be laid off or losing their job one day, like what they had experienced last year. So over the course of their career, they never had spent time or efforts on maintaining or establishing new relationships. So last year, when they were laid off, they're really panicked. They didn't have people to turn to, to ask questions, or ask for help. And they, don't, they didn't know where to start when it comes to look for work. So having, knowing your purpose, why you're looking for, uh, for connections, for network is really important. I also want to share with you my own story. So as Karen had introduced at the beginning of our today's session, that I came to Canada as international student back in the days to study for my undergrad studies. So I did, in my last year of my undergrad studies, I had to realize that my asset, connection assets, was actually very small. How did I know that? Because I knew at that time I need to look for work. And uh, when I think about people who I could turn to to ask for questions or for referrals, all I could thought about was my professors and student advisors. And the answers they gave me were all very kind and genuine, but are all from the educational perspective with all due respect. I knew I need to expand my assets with connections and to get myself out of my comfort zone. I also, I kind of knew at that time what I wanted to do, but I was kind of in a dilemma between two fields of work that I wanted to choose from. I had questions that were un unanswered. So I said, um, I motivate myself by getting these questions answered. I also give myself a timeline by June 30th, for example, I'm going to get these questions answered by talking with these people. So let me share with you an example of the why for, for my why back in the days was to understand which field of the two choices I wanted to, I needed to make between which one would be better career choice for me and how to get into that field by the end of June. So that was my purpose. And I knew at that time that launching a career, building on a career, which falls under the asset column, takes a systematic planning. It also takes a phased approach. I didn't want to jump right into talking to as many people as possible and getting as much information as possible. That's not effective. And sometimes I don't know if you have felt, but if we get too much information, we get confused, right? We don't know what's the right information, what's the better information anymore. So we need to have our effort be targeted. And the number one 
Um, uh, the number one pitfall is with con making connections is that people do not think clearly, do not define clearly about their why, their purpose for networking. The networking, the why example I share with you on my screen is for that phase of my career. So that does not apply all um, throughout my whole career life, but I just apply for that period. And that why changes between phase to phase. Fast forward to five, just over five years ago, when I started my own business, I was a brand new entrepreneur, didn't know what I was doing. So the first year or two, I spent lots of time attending networking events, whether it was in person or online, I went to as many as possible, collect as many business cards as possible. My gasoline bill was super high and my calendars were packed full. But after some time, I tracked all these networking efforts and I analyzed my efforts only to realize that only 5% of those efforts actually turn into something. So 95% of my effort actually was not well utilized. So let me turn the floor to you and have you write, either take out pen and paper, or if you like the traditional way, write down your answer, or if you like to write on your phone or on your pad, it's totally your choice. Write down your reason today for making connections and be smart about your why. So when I say smart, it's no different than you're setting your yearly or monthly objective for your work or studies. Um, so be specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-bound. So if you can take the next minute and write down your reason for making connection and be smart about it, and then I'll be looking for <clears throat> and then I'll be looking for a volunteer or two to share their answers. Sorry, Ada, your audio clicked off. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, great. So yes, it seems like people are finished with their uh, writing out their smart statement. I'll be just looking for a few volunteers to share their statements in the chat box. And then if I could travel Karen to read out a few examples, that'll be lovely. Sure. Um, so people have started putting some of their responses in the chat box. Um, I'll share mine to start. Um, so my reason for networking is to be able to share knowledge and experiences with colleagues um, to hear their perspective and how they may have handled some different situations. Um, Katie says to understand business trends and to gain aw awareness on market values. Um, Sabrina says it makes her happy uh, to network, she enjoys learning from others and what makes my, and it makes my career that I love better too. It's a winning circle. Uh, Jennifer says to make connections, to exchange information and connect people and to grow her business. Um, Gail says to connect with others and to learn and share, find work and personal opportunities, for example, volunteers, workers, and other personal growth. Uh, learn, Eliza, Elizabeth says, learn and lean on others, HR experience and work on my professional skills. Um, awesome. That's great. Thank you very much, Karen, for the time, uh, uh, for the time concern. So I'm going to pause you there. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you very much, audience, for your participation. Those are all lovely answers. 
as we do not have enough time for me to uh, look at each statement and help share with you my two cents, I would like, I'd love to challenge you when you go home, when you finish with this webinar, I guess you are at home, to relook at your statement using the SMART tool. So again, the statements I've heard so far are pretty specific. Um, it sounds measurable to me. They are achievable, they are realistic, but I didn't hear more the time bomb piece. Um, the other thing is that if you want to identify just one or two purposes of why you want to make the connection, so you can really target your networking effort towards the specific one or two reasons. But thank you again for your participation. So after we have identified that clear reason why we want, want to make connections, because the now we're going to gear towards who we need to be connecting with. So as I mentioned in my example, um, I was a student about to graduate at that time, and my assets column was really limited. I didn't know too many people, so I really struggled. Who should I turn to, right? Um, so using my example, the why, I need to understand which field of career is a better choice between the two that I want to, to explore, and I gave myself a deadline. So then in terms of who I need to connect with, I identified about five to seven people who work in these two fields that I was interested in. And again, I didn't jump into talking to as many people as possible, getting as much information as possible. I just identified five to seven people. And on top of that, ideally, ideally, I want to talk to these five to seven people who are in these two industries at different stages of the career trajectory. So if they're at different age groups, different uh, stages of their career, I'm I was able to hear about different perspectives of their experiences within those occupations, those industries and fields. At the same time, it also gives, it gave me a clear picture of the career path, career trajectory of those fields. And also if I could maintain those relationships of the five to seven people I met, that would be great. Maybe potentially we can turn that into a mentorship relationship, a friendship, or even potential referral to volunteer or work. So that was my, uh, my who that I defined at that time. The number two pitfall that I have realized was that people define who they want to connect with instead of who they need to connect with. And there is a clear distinction between the two. So if you're a job seeker, I would imagine that you would want to connect or you would need to connect with HR people, uh, recruiters, headhunters, um, and, and even hiring managers of your targeted or desired companies. If you are a working professional and you want to grow your career, then I would imagine you probably need to connect with people inside your organization, outside your organization, getting these mentorship coaching relationships started, either you're being coached or mentored, or you mentor or coach others. Both ways can help you develop professional uh, skills. Or it could be that you're looking for that promotion or transfer of a different uh, secondment or job enlargement, job enrichment opportunity. If you're an entrepreneur, then of course you want to expand on your customer base and enhancing your business presence either online or in person and your reputation. So think about who you need to connect with instead of who are easy, who you want to connect with. So that's the second pitfall I have realized. And again, I'm a lazy speaker today. <laughs> I want to get your participation. I'm going to again have you use your, either your pad or your paper to write down based on your clearly defined reason, the one or two reason why you want to network. If you can write down a list of two types of people who you need to connect with, that that would be great. So please take a minute to do that. And again, if you are done, if you're a fast writer or fast typer, then feel free to share uh, your two types of people that you want, you need to connect with in our chat box. And I'm just going to trouble Karen one more time. No problem, Ada. Um, there's just a couple of responses so far. So we've got HR and OHS managers. 
experienced individuals in my profession and high achievers, uh, talent acquisition and recruiters. Uh, Arnell says decision makers and influential leaders. Awesome. Thank you so much, Karen. Those are, those are great answers. And I'm going to be a little bit tricky as well in the way that the exercise did not end here. I'm going to have you do a brain teaser too. It's now based on your reason, based on your why, and based on the two types of people that you need to connect with. Also think about the how. Think about how you're going to approach them. And that leads us very easily, very smoothly into the next topic is that part of the four step of building connections, building the assets column. So we have identified a reason, very specific reason why we want to meet people, why we want to make those connections. We have identified who we need to meet with, the type of people. And now the next critical step and probably the most difficult piece is the how. How do we approach someone who we need to connect with? And a lot of um, people who I talk to, I hear them tell me that they're shy, they're introverted, uh, they're not comfortable introducing themselves or initiating a conversation in front of strangers. They're afraid of being rejected or not respected. Uh, other people have language barriers or other challenges in life uh, where they're they just don't know where to start the conversation. So those are all the reasons I had as well. But come, going back to my example, when I was a university student and looking for my first job, I, I had the same concerns. And I, as I mentioned to you that my asset column with connections was very small, very limited. So I was really scratching my head to think about who I can talk to, who I can ask questions, who I can get more uh, referrals to talk to other people who I can ask these five to seven people who I ask these questions. So the easiest way to start and probably for those who are not comfortable connecting with others, initiating those conversations or events is talk to first practice those skills with people around you, people who you are comfortable with. Practice, just talk to them, have the dialogue, ask them how they feel about the way how you initiate a conversation and practice these questions that you want to ask. You want to be very detailed, very clear about the questions. And let me tell you, so oftentimes on my LinkedIn or on my email inbox, I receive um, questions from uh, job seekers or professionals or just people who I uh, somehow connect with. And they ask very general question. Can you tell me how to get a job in HR? Very typical question. Or uh, I'm new to Canada, where do I start to find work? Or other people will be like, I want to start my own management consulting business. How can I do that? You know, these questions, I really don't know where to start to answer because those are too general. It would take me days, weeks to prepare a really detailed and thorough responsible answer, but I want to make sure the answer is tailored towards the audience. So when you prepare to talk to people, make sure that the questions you ask are tailored, are detailed and very specific. So people can, are willing to spend their 10, 15 minutes with you answer the questions that you may have. At the time when I was about to choose a career choice, I also thought about, okay, I knew professors, I knew student advisors, but they gave me good advice, but only to a limit. I need to talk to field people, people who are working in those fields already. So I thought about, I didn't have too many connections, but I had some volunteer work. I had some paid part-time jobs. Let me think about who I can connect with there. And lucky enough, I had two good connections. When I, I made a really good impression when I was about to graduate was my part-time job. And uh, I met this outside consultant and we developed a really good relationship. She really liked the work I did. And then eventually she became my informal mentor friend. And uh, she knew the dilemma I was having, the questions I had. So she purposely took me to an event and introduced me to the people who I need to connect with. But again, if I didn't talk to her, she would never knew that I have those needs to talk to these people in these two fields. I also thought about the volunteer work that I did. I had, at that time, I had been volunteering with one organization for almost a year. So they saw the kind of work I could, I could perform and, and my char characters and personalities, all that stuff. And so I talked to this outside speaker who came into the organization and gave a speech. And there, I was really impressed and I was genuinely interested in what he was doing, asking questions and, and see about his experience. And to date, I still keep 
connection with this one speaker. My mentor, unfortunately, had passed away two years ago, but I still keep in touch with her families. So those were my channels back in the days who I was exploring and really thinking. Um, but there are so many other ways. I mean, back in the day, social media, online platforms were not popular. Nowadays, they are. Uh, last August, when I did this webinar for, uh, with CPHR, um, and Nicole was the lovely host, and uh, we talk a lot about online presence. So having your LinkedIn profile built, having your infographic done, having your even your website, your blogs, all those are great online presence to help you establish your asset column. Build your skills, build your connections, your industry reputations, whether you're job seekers or professionals wanting to grow or entrepreneur, wh whoever, uh, whatever uh, choice that you have to make in life. If you are seeking for those good connections or events, I would also personally recommend to use Eventbrite. I have been using that to source the type of events that I want to join and, and uh, also LinkedIn, of, of course. The other trick or tip that I want to share with the audience today is uh, with LinkedIn it, or with just general online platforms, you have the benefits of searching for information at your fingertips, but be very specific about information. So if you want to get into a particular career occupation or field or company, do your research, look at their website, look at their social media, look at their online presence, and also look for salary information so you know what you're getting into. And because that will be an interview question, that's for sure. And the other thing is that now uh, I have also, uh, when I was moving up in my HR career, using LinkedIn to search for people's profile. I do not no need to know them. They do not need to know me, but I was looking at people's career path. How did they get to where they are today? And how did they become who they are today? And if I'm interested, I will send a connection invite, very specific, very respectful, and ask to be connected. And if there is the right opportunity, then I would further have, uh, you know, either a phone call or coffee, whether it's online or in person. So I really took advantage of those opportunities to meet more people, search for information, so I could ask those targeted questions to fill my brain, to fill my knowledge. And the number three pitfall of networking, of making those assets, making those connections, is that people think networking happens only when they're bound to a networking occasion, which means a networking event or a job fair, for example. And in my own experience, that's not the case. There are so many occasions in life that happens that networking can happen. It's a natural life and social business skill. It happens all around us every day. When you go to gym, when you wait at the bus stop, when you go to your religious group, when you go for a, a holiday gala or celebration, uh, when you meet someone in a restaurant, uh, or when you, uh, uh, when you have your family outings, all of these are occasions. And I'm, I'm chatty. <laughs> so when I go with my family to a vacation trip or, um, I mean, of course, before COVID or, or restaurant and stuff, I chat with the business owners. And so I can learn about the market information of the local areas. I learn about the business challenges. So I use that as a leverage to build my management consulting practice off of. And then when I go to the gym or when I go, I love swimming. Um, and uh, so I would still chat with people I meet in those occasions. And, and it's funny that uh, once I, I've used this example before, but once I went to uh, Best Buy uh, looking for a uh, um, equipment and this gentleman who was a customer service representative was super professional, just the, the knowledge, the, the, the skill sets and the way how he presented himself were just lovely. So it made such a great impression on me. At that time I was hiring uh, for a client company and I asked him if, he, if he'd be interested in a full-time business development opportunity with this organization. And he said, yes. And he came for an interview and fast forward, he's still in that role today. So pit, pitfall number three, networking does not to be need to be bound by a networking occasion. It happens every day all around us. So again, I'm going to be the lazy speaker and ask you to use the chat box function to tell me all of these channels I've listed, or you may have your own channel, please do. Um, what's the one channel that you hate the most or you like the least? What's your least favorite networking channel and why? So please use the chat box to tell us.
And Carrie, if I can trouble you, that would be great. Thank you. Sure. Um, so social media, excluding LinkedIn, uh, occasions because they're uh, introverts and shy. Personal, physical networking events, um, people aren't feeling comfortable with those. Uh, LinkedIn because skills are over exaggerated. Um, I also find LinkedIn difficult because you get the, yeah, as you said before, the really random general questions that are difficult to answer in a simple response. Um, emails, lots of formal networking events um, seem to be people's um, least favorite. Twitter, phone calls, um, online as I miss people and you can miss nuances, which is very true. Um, occasions, yeah, lots of occasions and social media in general. Thank you, Karen. Uh, that's a great summary. And thank you again, everyone, for your participation. I think the easiest way for us to answer some of your concerns is by doing the next activity. So in the next activity, I am going to do a quiz with you. So I hope you're excited as the, the pictures on the screen. Um, so just want to remind you, this is a safe space to share um, as long as you're, um, so just whatever comes to mind, uh, type up your fast answer, honest answer. I'll be happy to see your answers. So we have six questions on the next screen, all about networking, all about the how and why. Um, so I'm going to ask you again to use the chat box function to tell us the answers. Ready? Go. So the first question is, our lovely CPHR lady, Nicole, our organizer who has been working with CPHR for several years and organize all kinds of social events. If you want to connect with Nicole, what's your channel? Uh, email her is the response or call her. Okay, thank you. Nicole, you're going to be busy. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to connect with our uh, lovely host today, Karen, who is also an HR professional in the Central Alberta chapter, how would you do that? Uh, LinkedIn with a note, email, um, LinkedIn or email seems to be the consistent answers. Okay, thank you. And the third question is, uh, if you're connected with me, whatever way that you have been connected with me, how would you introduce yourself to me? Uh, with a specific question, um, via email, reference today's session. Absolutely. I was, I was hoping someone would say that. Yes, please reference today's session so that I could remember how we met, the occasion. And that's no different than if you're connecting with someone with over phone call, email, or LinkedIn. Always remind them how you have met with that person. So that person felt that there was some past relationship or there's a history. They're more inclined to respond. Uh, always leave with a positive note. You know, everyone is busy. So you want to be specific with asking targeted questions. And the question number four, how would you connect with your desired company's hiring manager? What are the channels? Um, LinkedIn, via email, uh, email or LinkedIn to invite to a Zoom session. Mm hmm that's great. So LinkedIn, email, or eventually meets uh, virtually. Then the next question may be a little bit more difficult. So is the why. You know how to connect with a hiring manager, but why do you want to connect with a hiring manager? To build rapport, uh, explain your shared purpose. Provide an introduction and determine whether or not I would want to apply for that position. Highlight my interest and get information about the role um, so, so that you're at the top of mind for um, their opportunities. Absolutely. Those are great, great answer. Thank you. And the last one is we had talked about the asset column for our professional network. So think about your own asset column. How would you enhance that?
through training sessions. Um, be more focused on the connections that you're making. Uh, develop my network for opportunities. That's great. And don't forget today, this is you can call a webinar, you can call a workshop or training. This is also a networking occasion. So even though networking is not restricted just to a occasion, you can do it. It's all around us every day, happens all the time. Uh, but don't forget, this is a networking occasion. Think about how you can make a positive impression on the people who you want to be connected with. So it could be CPHR, it could be the speaker, or it could be some, some of your audience or colleagues. So you can think about this as a networking opportunity and use that as a leverage when you put in your own questions to the Q&A box or um, if you have any questions, of course. So thank you very much for your, your participation. And the last step of building assets and connections is really taking actions. Create your plan, narrow it down to the very specifics and take actions. The pitfall number four I have seen is people have beautiful plans. They have all kinds of reasons to network, all kinds of reasons not to network. And even greatest athletes, they can do all kinds of mental training, but if they don't do the physical practices, then no records can be broken, right? So plan is good, but action needs to be taken. And so now in the next minute or so, I would like, love for you to write down your biggest issue or biggest challenge when it comes to networking and how you envision yourself to overcome it in the next however long period you want to identify for yourself. And again, if we have any volunteer who is willing to share with the chat box, please do so. So I have the I have the opposite issue of, as some people where I prefer to network in person. And so with COVID and not being able to make those connections in person, um, I need to get more comfortable with social media and using LinkedIn to make those networking connections. The online presence. Yes, thank you for being all this, Karen. <laughs> And as you are doing that, I would also challenge you to think about your networking plan for April, for the next quarter, for the future months to come. And uh, so on the screen, you're seeing a QR code. If you want to take out your phone, uh, you can use the camera function to scan the QR code, or if you have the QR app, you can do that too. This takes you directly to my company's website to download um, a free template, of what I created, what I have been using over the years called my networking calendar. So that gives you, and, and again, you don't have to use what I have, but it gives you pointers about uh, reminders of your challenges, goals that you set for yourself, timeline that you have designed for yourself, and also what are the actions you want to take month by month? How would you evaluate the results? And what would you reward yourself with at year end? So with that being said, um, and I do want to leave ample time for discussions, is the key takeaways today, four steps of building those strategic relationships, enhancing your assets column. Number one is really understanding the purpose, the reason, one or two reasons. Be very specific, be smart about why you want to network. And the number one pitfall is that before people spend all the time and effort, they don't think about why. So they jump into networking without really knowing what they need. Step number two is to define the who you need to connect with, not who you want to connect with. And that's the pitfall number two. Step number three is now we know the reason we want to connect um, and the who we need to connect with is the, the how, is which approach, which channel we're going to take in order to get hold of someone. And the pitfall number three is that people only think networking happens during a networking occasion, but it actually happens all the time. And the last step is to create your plan and narrow it down to a couple of objectives, detailed specifics. And the pitfall number four is that people have plans, but they don't take actions. So that summarizes today's discussion. And again, I'm leaving the QR code on the screen for a little bit. Um, it's also going to be in your handouts. You can also click on the web link if you wish to. There are some free materials for networking and job searching and, and professional growth. 
Um, the one ask I do have for the audience is that I'm aiming to have my company's LinkedIn uh, to have 1,000 followers by the end of the year. So that's my SMART goal for LinkedIn for the end of the year. If you can help me achieve there, I will be greatly appreciated. So if you wouldn't mind, just follow us on LinkedIn. That would be awesome. So that concludes today's um, lecture part of the webinar. I hope that you have taken some notes or mentor notes for yourself to prepare for your future networking uh, opportunities. I will turn the floor back to Karen and uh, let's open it up for questions and discussions. Thank you, Ada. Um, I just have one question right now. So we have uh, someone asking, the biggest issue with networking is feeling like I'm talking to them just because I need something and have nothing to offer them. Do you have any tips to feel more useful to the person that you're talking to? Absolutely. That's a great point. Um, so networking, in my humble opinion, is about relationship building. So relationship should be two ways. It's a mutual relationship. It should never be just about one person seeking something and never returns back because it also does not feel good internally. So in my opinion, if you could offer something in return, volunteering or offer some help, that would be great. Let me give you a story. I have shared this example um, with CPHR audience last year was that I had this young lady approach me. I was, I was at a trade, trade show. Uh, I gave a presentation and then I had my booth at the trade show. After the, uh, the presentation, a young lady came, approached me and, and said that she really liked the presentation. She learned lots, want to make connection with me. So we add each other on LinkedIn right there. Um, and then uh, she asked some specific questions and she said, can I stay in touch with you? I was like, yeah, no problem. So she, since then, she had uh, followed me or voluntarily came to two other events that I was speaking at or organized as a volunteer just to help me manage my booth when I was busy talking with other people. Um, and I felt bad actually, she didn't ask for anything. She just wanted to volunteer and generally help and see how I do my work. So I felt bad. And then at uh, the second occasion, I introduced her to a couple of people who I knew at that event. And eventually one company, to, one, one colleague there took her on for, for an interview and then she got a job eventually. So to me, that's a very genuine gesture. And I knew that she was looking for something, but I was hoping that could help her. But it was her herself who offered to help me first. Great, thank you. So I don't have any other questions, but if there are no other questions, um, Ada, can you give us some tips about maintaining your network? Yeah, absolutely, great points. Um, so maintaining network, so, Maybe I'll throw some numbers out. This is my personal ana analytics. Um, people who know me uh, knows me that I'm an analytical person. I track my networking efforts so I could see how I'm going to follow up, who I'm going to follow up, when I'm going to follow up, and the comments and uh, the results are ripped out of, of, out of these networking uh, efforts. So in order to maintain these relationships, as I mentioned, relationships are two ways. They're mutual, mutual respect relationship. It does take efforts. And people are forgetful because people are busy and I'm busy too. So if we have now talked in a couple of months or a couple of years, I probably have forgotten. Um, it has nothing to do with my salt and pepper hair. It just has to do that life is busy and work is busy. So you do want to remind the other person or remind the people who you are targeting, the who you need to connect with um, on a regular basis, sending interesting articles that the other person is interested in, uh, helping the other person volunteering to do some stuff, uh, inviting that person to an online or in-person event of interest, uh, or do something that scares you as well. So you may be next podcast host, you may organize an online event yourself. You may be the speaker in next webinar. Invite me. I'll be happy to join. If I can, I'll let you know. So those are great opportunities for us to keep in touch with each other and remind each other that, you know, we are business colleagues. We made those connections. We can help each other out. Uh, sorry, I, I sidetracked. I was going to share some data. So um, because I teach at post-secondary institutions and also I do lots of networking events, whether it's in person or online, uh, speaking events as well, I probably meet about 200 to 350 people, give or take, on a quarterly basis. Am I going to remember every single name, every single face? No, I don't have that, um, that super brain. Um, probably after three months or so, I may keep in touch with five or 10, maximum five, five, probably around five people out of this 200 to 300 people I meet. 
After six months, after a year, that five may become just one or two. But those one or two are the people who I need to connect with, who I need to maintain those relationships with. And those are people who I will maintain and spending time and effort to maintain the relationship with. Uh, today's session was really um, interesting and gave me some perspective on where to focus my networking um, goals for the next little while. Um, so I really appreciate that. And thank you to everyone for attending today's session. We hope you found that it was informative.